Hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, this video is going to be part two of uh, zero trust network access for a remote user. In this video, we're going to be demonstrating a lab scenario where a remote user is trying to access internal uh, resources, for example, SSH or RDP through the uh, 40 gate. Uh, and uh, we call this uh, TCP uh, forwarding with uh, ZTNI, ZTNA tags applied through the uh, 40 gate. So let's get started. So this is the topology uh, we're going to be working on uh, in this video. If you haven't seen uh, 400 zero trust network access uh, for uh, remote user part, no, part one, uh, please uh, refer to that video on my YouTube channel. And that video we're gonna we, we demonstrate and the same uh, topology, same uh, environment, how a remote user is trying to access to uh, HTTP, HTTPS internal uh, resources through the 40 gate uh, uh, and having ZTNA apply, uh, using ZTNA policy and having ZTNA applied on tags applied on the policy. So in this scenario, uh, specifically, we're going to be demonstrating a remote user, but uh, accessing internal uh, resources. Uh, through a 40 gate using ZTNA policy, but in our case, we're going to be using uh, we, the traffic is going to be a TCP traffic, like not HTTP, HTTPS, but a TCP, for example, RDP traffic or uh, SSH uh, uh, traffic. All right. So specifically in our scenario, we're going to have the remote user accessing uh, internal resources uh, in the DC network using the uh, SSH. Uh, for example, if you have a 40 manager on the DC network and the remote user is trying to access to it uh, and you want to use uh, ZTNA to achieve that, uh, you could do uh, the following that we're going to explain in this uh, scenario. So uh, we're going to start this video by um, logging into the uh, 40 client EMS. Uh, so I'm going to RDP into the Windows machine that has the 40 client so I'm gonna access the uh, 40 client using the uh, browser uh, so I'm gonna be using the same uh, ZTNA tags that we created in the uh, part one video. If you haven't seen that, please refer um, to that uh, 400 zero trust network access for, uh, with the uh, for remote user uh, part one video. Uh, so we're going to be using the same ZTNA uh, tags and rules. And what are we going to add up? Uh, the same policy as well, which is for off uh, fabric user, which is basically a users that are uh, uh, outside the network. So uh, what I'm going to do here in order to do uh, SSH access to internal resources uh, or uh, let's say RDP access, we're going to have to go into the uh, endpoint profiles and we're going to have to create a ZTNA destination. So the ZTNA destination uh, in our example is going to be uh, a 40 manager device and uh, that 40 manager device is going to have the IP address 192.168.20.111 uh, okay uh, I'm going to be the remote user let's say is an admin and want to access the 40 manager using SSH so I'll call this SSH access I'm going to go to advance I'm going to enable that uh, feature so I'm going to say this feature will be uh, not hidden on 40 client because I don't want it to be hidden and I'm going to create the uh, ZTNA destination rule so destination name is going to be SSH 40 manager the destination host is going to be the uh, 40 manager 192.168.20.111 and we have to put the port number that we're going to use to access uh, that service is going to be 22. Proxy gateway is going to be the 40 gate device that is facing the outside network. 
and the IP address for that is 192.168.1.60 and I'm going to be using uh, port number 822. Uh, you could use any port number that is not uh, being used on the FortiGate, so I'll do 822. So I'll click save and I'll click save in here as well. And now I'm going to make sure that this profile is going to be applied on remote users policy. This uh, remote user policy is basically going to identify any uh, user that is uh, it will be identifying as on fabric if the user belongs to 192.168.10.0 network. If the user does not belong to this on fabric network, the user is going to be considered as off fabric. So uh, I want to apply this uh, profile to the off fabric users. So I'm going to go into the ZTNA. I'm going to enable SSH in here. And I'm going to click save. And now what we're going to do, let's go ahead and log into the uh, Windows client machine. So the Windows client machine is John, which is the remote machine in the topology. I should be able to, oh, sorry, that's not the IP address. Uh, the IP address is um, 31. All right, so this is John. Now we're logging into that machine. And I'm going to go and access the 40 client. And I should be able to see that because this client is considered as off fabric, again, because it does not belong to the on fabric IP address that we mentioned earlier, which is 192.168.10.0. Uh, this machine IP address is 1.31. So it would be considered as off fabric and it would have the uh, ZTNA tags that we already created in the past uh, video. Now we can see here there is ZTNA destination uh, pushed be pushed into the fork client from the 40 client EMS and uh, it has the information that we configured earlier. The proxy gateway is the 40 gate. Uh, destination host is the 40 manager and on port 22. Now, uh, what we're missing now is that we're going to have to configure the ZTNA policy on the 40 gate. I'm going to go ahead and access the 40 gate firewall. And I'm going to need to create the ZTNA policy. Well, first of all, I'm going to have to create the ZTNA server rule. Uh, this rule we used in the previous video on port one. Again, please refer to my channel for that uh, video. Uh, it's four and zero trust network access for remote users. Uh, I'm going to have to create a new one. It's going to be SSH access 40 manager, let's say. External interface is 1 1. The port number is going to be a port number that um, is not used on the 40 gate. I'm going to use the port number. Uh, specified here, A22. Certificate, I'm going to use the factory default. Now I'm going to create the server mapping. Server mapping is uh, the internal server that I want to access to. In our case, we're going to use TCP forwarding, which is uh, any TCP traffic. And our example is going to be port 22. I'm going to create a new address for that. And it's going to be 40 manager SSH. This is 40 manager IP address. 
and the SSH internal port is 22. This is the internal uh, resource that I want to access. It's called uh, server mapping. All right, click OK. Now, uh, if I go to the firewall policy, create a new, I'm going to create a ZTNA policy. I'm going to call it SSH access. And it's going to be on one. So SSH access could include uh, any, you know, uh, internal SSH resource that I want to access uh, using the uh, ZTNA source. I could limit it only to the public IP address of that remote user or limited to all. The ZTNA server is going to be SSH access 40 manager. Uh, ZTNA tags, I want to use uh, both admin uh, uh, admins and AV protection. And I want to make sure the logic is and in there. So both of the tags has to be present on the 40 clients, which they are already in here. I could see the 40 client here has both admins and AV protection available. Admins because it's a part of the admin groups, AV protection because it has AV protection enabled. And I'm going to do certificate inspection. I'm going to go ahead, click OK. All right. Now, um, this is it for uh, setting up TCP uh, forwarding uh, using the uh, ZTNA on the 40 gate firewall and 40 client EMS. Uh, if you want to access this resource, you just have to open a PuTTY session, enter this uh, IP address 192.168.20.111 on port 22, and it will uh, automatically, uh, you know, send the traffic to this proxy gateway, which is the 40 gate, and then the 40 gate using the ZTNA policy is going to check that traffic, check the posture of the client. Uh, if you have any authentication applied, uh, in our case, we don't. Uh, it's going to check the authentication and then it's going to check if the uh, client match uh, or has the ZTNA tags applied, which it does. Uh, then uh, all these conditions are, you know, uh, achieved. Uh, what it's going to do after is going to send the traffic to the uh, internal or the server mapping destination. All right. So I hope you guys. Uh, found this video uh, beneficial, uh, please like and subscribe if you like this content. So stay tuned for future content. See you later.